So we, we have now touched the two different clouds from Buho and Zuta, from WebEx Contact Center. We look into the Buho and Zuta cloud a little bit. And I think now it's time that we look into the Cisco WebEx Contact Center cloud a little bit and understand what that one can, can achieve today, what can it bring for us. So remember this picture? So we talk about this now, right? So uh, as we were already saying, with this native cloud technology, we do have a much, much, much more better way to introduce also new features. For example, I'll give you just an example. Within here, or within here, or within here, doesn't matter, you have a, a release cycle of roughly a year, roughly. So every year, roughly, so some of you may have heard that uh, version 12.6, Contact Center 12.6 came out um, two, three months ago or something, which would stay for at least 12 months. And then the next release will come. The 12.5 release before was also there even for more than a year. Why is that so complicated? Because of the technology stack, which is used in behind in the software. Remember what, what I was saying? This one, this one, and this one uses the Windows boxes, the Linux boxes. You need to plug in some, some USB sticks or whatever you have on-prem in order to, to install the software and so on and so on. Here's a different approach with this container approach, uh, um, technology containers, what, what, what are there. We can have a much more quicker update of new versions and also of bugs and all these things. So my experiences uh, with the platform is that every two to four weeks, a new release is on the platform. <clears throat> so I did one joke. I did a silly screenshot on the, on the bottom left. There's a version number, and I screenshotted it and put it into a notepad. And I was realizing every time when I log in, oh, new version. A minor release, minor statement, but it's a new version. Why, why is it good? So bugs going to be removed. Additional features come into the game. Just example, I'm I mobile, we have just heard a few minutes before. So what can WebEx Contact Center do? So on the left-hand side, you see what you get out of the box, more or less, if you want so. So you have a platform, which is omnichannel, omnichannel capable. So routing, emails, chat, also voice. Uh, we have the possibility also to record the standard recording, so you can't compare the, the default recording, which is there with what was Calabrio is doing. But, and this is also very cool, the tools from Calabrio in order to evaluate from quality management perspective and so on, what we have just heard today before, can also be leveraged on this platform. Was there a question online? Okay. Good. Um, then the next thing is, we have the possibility to use different agents. No. Good. Um, um, so we have the possibility to use a different. Form. Well, so, it's just, you know, yeah. so we can use any phone. So for example, in my demo, you will see that the agent can use a, a mobile as an anti-vice. So it's not necessary that, that it was a Cisco phone or a, a, a Teams client, as an example. That's something. And we have also the, the native integration into uh, Google into Google Dialog flow. So that means we can serve voice and chatbots as well out of this platform. Yeah, but... And this makes really mm -hmm. sense, for example, if you have an automatic speech recognition IVR system, yeah, for say, say, uh, I don't know, Schaden, you know, to get into the Schaden department or something, these things you can build up with a, with a, um, uh, uh, with a voice bot. There are some add-ons on top of that. So there's one thing, for example, the experience management. You also heard today in the morning, it's very important to get feedback from the customer, from, from the contacts of the customers. How have they been served? Everything is good, everything is bad, question mark. That component is also available as an add-on for, for WebEx. So that means after a call, you can send out an SMS, and then you can rate via SMS. You click on the link and you rate how good or bad was your call. Workforce optimization. 
I was stating as well before. So, for example, the Calabria platform is also tightly integrated into this cloud in order to bring that feature. The same for the screen recording. Co-browsing and WebEx uh, video we will see in the demo later on. There's also one of these add-ons which I like pretty much because when you, when you say digital, you must have the possibility also to extend your chat with <coughs> additional interaction. Then there are multiple CRM connectors available today, um, as this is a fairly new um, contact center solution, so it's a growing market of additional CRMs getting connected to it. And last but not least then, of course, the outbound management. So for outbound campaign management, for example, is also possible with a platform on top. So how is the platform available? Or where is it available? So it's available today in the US. So it's more than a year even now available in the US. Uh, it's coming into Europe. So we have in November this year, we are very happy and proud that we will get with that, that we will get um, the platform available to be precise on the 7th. That's where we're going to get it. So that means we can serve WebEx Contact Center within, or we can, we can consume it in Europe. Plus, we can also build up Follow the Sun Contact Centers based on this platform. So that means we can also serve Europe with Asia and US as a Follow the Sun Contact Center possibility. Dawson, I have one question. I know that you have a question. <laughs> <laughs> when, um, when you are mentioning, let's say, Australia and Asia, these three hubs, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, does it mean that you have your data center infrastructure in these countries and you can also serve, for instance, countries like Singapore, yeah. Philippines as well? So if you see here on the map, it's a little bit, you see here, there are data centers with a red dot in here. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, and you see something which is called a voice pop. Voice pop, if you can compare, that's the ingress point where, you, where your yeah. zip uh, trunk gets terminated. And, and there you see, so you can have a brain in the US, for example, as a routing instance. And then in Australia and Europe and so on, you can have the, the zip in, uh, inbound trunk. So that means that um, you, um, Asia Core stays in Asia and doesn't go to another continent. <clears throat> So it, it does not mean at the end that, let's say, when, when there's, let's say, a country not listed, that you cannot have the service in that country, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. So you can have agents in, in those countries, uh, for example, uh, any country which is not listed. That means uh, that there can be agents there. Uh, but the um, cell or the contract is in one of the listed countries. Okay. That's important, yeah. That's a contractual thing. Contractual thing, yeah. So, so if you country, ask for embargo states, yeah. uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yes, for, uh, where, is, where is the selling countries? There's, there, there needs, uh, the contract needs to be. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a, um, a deep dive into these three desktops. So I would like to go. I would like to go um, through the Azure desktop with you, then have a look on the supervisor, how he can control that one. Mm -hmm. And how is the system administration done? Let's first come to the Azure Desktop. So Azure Desktop, you were seeing this picture on, on the other slides as well. So it's a web-based desktop, one desktop which is serving all the channels, chat, voice, and so on. Voice terminated on a Cisco phone, on a mobile, on any phone, what you have, on your landline, at home. That's where the voice comes in. That comes out to the agent, sorry. Uh, we do have statistics in there, so that means uh, if, if I want to know my team, for example, uh, how, how is that one um, performing, so I can see these numbers. And there's one thing I, I really, really like is, you can't see it, but you may see it later in the demo, there are even a distinguishment between four channels. So the platform is serving four channels. What could it be? Voice. Chat. Chat. Email. Email. And what's the fourth one? Combined. Mm -hmm. combined, 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 yeah. yeah, asynchronous messaging. So that means the possibility to, if you send an SMS, you may respond in two minutes, you may respond tomorrow or in two weeks, right? So you have these asynchronous channel, uh, channels and, and the platform is capable of, of, of handling these long asynchronous channels. So if we, if we move on, and uh, remember this uh, move to cloud thing, right? 
So if you move into cloud, then you move everything into cloud. You move your contact center into cloud. You may move also your CRM into cloud. And if you do that, um, then you require as well the same integrations what you have maybe today on-prem mm -hmm. as well in cloud. And this is what we have here, for example. So here, this is an SAP C4C CRM system. And within there, we can plug in the WebEx contact center and we can then use functionalities like stream pops with the customer data. So if a, if a caller comes in or an SMS comes in, it makes a pop up in the CRM. You can, you can maintain the customer history and all its products within the CRM. You have the possibility also to use click to call. So that means you click within the CRM on a phone number and then the phone starts dialing out. Now you could ask or you could look a little bit like a question mark and say, well, how can I dial out if I have my mobile here, right? So what, what's basically what it's doing, so if you make an outbound call, it's initiated into the cloud that you have a request to call a certain number. The cloud makes the in initiation, so it's calling you as an agent and is calling as well the customer and connects them both together. Yeah, this is an example of the stream pop. So for example, if I call in, then you see here on the left-hand side in the CRM my name. So that's the traditional uh, integration of, of an SAP system. The same we can do with Salesforce. So there in Salesforce, it's only a little bit different. So the, here you have now the small plugin, which you may know also from the CCE integration from also from Bupa and Suta. And there, the call comes in, and then you have on the back end, you have your Salesforce presenting the screen pop, and as well as serving things like click to call. So now let's make some demos because it's so boring showing slides all the time, right? Yes. OK, so let's uh, log into WebEx Contact Center. So I was saying there's also the possibility to use uh, single sign-on, of course. So I'm, I don't have a single sign-on enabled here, um, but it's also possible. So when I log in, I get this dialog asking me multiple questions. The first one is, where am I reached on? So on which number am I reached on? So this is my mobile here. This is the agent phone number I'm reached on. The second thing is I can determine on login, and this is different from UCCE, I can determine which team do I work on now or today. Why? Because you have maybe changing roles, right? So within the uh, UCCE world, what do you do? You reskill an agent differently in order in the morning, he does that topic, on the afternoon he does that topic. What do you do? So you're gonna rate his proficiency level from high to low and vice versa. Instead of that, you have here the possibilities going through the teams, and this is my is pretty cool, that you can say, okay, now I'm working as a sales guy, for example, and now all skills are set in the back end in order that I only get the sales stuff. In addition, and also the, the, the desktop can also be changed during like your work in a, in a different uh, team. Right. Field, yeah. right, so that means even the layout of a desktop, for example, that I can see here my agent performance, for example, yeah, so that I can see it or I cannot see it, for example. These things are also controlled within, um, within this team selection, if you want to so. And here you see at the moment, so my team, yeah, well, some voice calls we did. Here you see the four chairs I was referring to, right? right? So, and, and here you can even then, of course, then drill down to maybe today. Yeah, today I did not much right only two test calls. <laughs> Uh, you can, of course, also bring um, uh, uh, graphics, for example. So what kind of interactions do we, do we, uh, uh, did I have, for example? This is what you have in here. Now, let's put myself ready. So there you see you have not ready reasons, which you know from UCC as well. So these are customized not ready reasons, plus the possibility to put yourself ready. Now, let's make a call into the platform. Hello and welcome. None, thank you for calling our contact center. If you need information about our products, please press 1. If you need to reach our support, please press 2. Press 1. And there you see incoming call now here ringing, and my, my mobile phone is also ringing. So I can answer this one here. 
This call is being recorded. So mute is So and and now call is established between customer and agent here, two mobiles as an example, and I can see as well what has been called. So I see my phone number, I can see what kind of queue did I did I reach in, what is my language, for example, I can also use that. And then you have possibilities like using also the, the recordings. So I can determine if any call, every call is gonna be recorded or only some of them. Plus also the control, can somebody put me on pause and resume for recording? That's also within the platform by, in, within the platform by default. Of course you have transfers, so you can make transfers either to other agents or to other queues or to external targets as well. So this all the standard stuff what you have normally within the contact center. So this is not the fancy part. The same also from consult call, um, that you make a conference with multiple parties, for example. <coughs> Good. If I close this call down, then- Please stay on the line as we want to know your opinion. Based on your interaction, how likely are you to recommend our services to a friend or family on a scale of zero to nine, zero being lowest and nine being highest? Yeah. How would you rate your overall satisfaction with the service you received on a scale of one to five, one being very unsatisfied and five being very satisfied? Thank you for your input. Hear you next time. Goodbye. And that, there you see, right? So we have this, this native integration also of getting feedback, for example, is, is, is there. Even if I would drop in within the queue, I will receive an SMS on the phone and I can do the same survey online through a website. So you get a link basically which directs to a website in order to do that. In this uh, post-call survey is not included. That's you know, exactly this voice post-call survey. Right. So, so the, the voice part is included. There, there are a certain lot of... of, of um, um, evaluations you can do, but this is an essential part within the platform. And this is pretty cool because, yeah, you could imagine it's, it's it's not so easy to do this in any any other setup. Good. Um, now let's maybe have a look on, on on the digital part. So this was a voice, the voice part. Let's be more digital for that. Um, Quickly need to connect myself so that you can see my phone. Okay. So now you are you are seeing my phone. Hopefully, yeah, you do. Now um, let's do the following. So imagine I'm I'm on the road. I have questions on the on the website. I I want to chat. I want to chat. I want to see how an interaction goes with the chatbot. I want to see also how it could be a co browse. That's what we want to do now. So. For example, I have a website here on my mobile. In the website, I can start a chat. So I say some details about me. You have some pull down menus saying I have questions about a product or I need support or something. And then you can start your chat from here. <clears throat> So now I'm connected in the chat, and the first thing, for example, because I'm traveling and I need a flight, I, I need to book a flight from A to B. So I can say, and there you see now the interaction with the chatbot, right? So the chatbot is now re responsible for getting essential data of my trip. For example, where do you want to leave? And where do I want to go to? Jens Han doesn't have an air, airport. <laughs> That's a nice try. <laughs> it's only for confusing the Russians. 
Yeah, it has a small airport as well. Yeah. We need to talk to Matthias Neubacher out there. He, he knows how to departure. Yeah. So, and then, okay, when when is the departure time? Oh, let's say tomorrow. And then you see the agent gets this uh, conversation as well. And here on the left side, there you see the the conversation. So I was chatting with the bot, right? Where do you need to fly to? London, Paris, and so on. So I see all the stuff which, which was already captured by the bot. So I can already take this into account in order to book this certain flight. Then I can also, of course, use the possibility to use... Um, yeah, pre-canned pre answers. So these pre-canned answers, you see it here as well. And now you see, well, they can chat back and forth, but I mean, this is not so fancy, but now they want to proceed, for example, in starting a co-browse session in there. So in order to do that, I must make my browser a little bit smaller that you see both. I ask a question in between. Yeah. What or who determines when the agent steps in? So when the odd, when the bot stops. So when does the bot stop and when does the agent get active? That you can configure within the bot. So you can set a certain level of of uh, confidence. For, that's one uh, example. So if if the bot says I I don't understand you, so the the possibility that I don't understand you is less than let's say 70, 80 percent. You say, okay, hand off to an agent, he, can, he must take care of. That's, that's one thing. No, another thing is uh, the bot is asking multiple questions, like in my case, so where do you want to fly to and from and so on. So yes, let's say five questions, and he's really working on every five of these questions and until all of them all must be filled in in order then to make a hand off to an agent. Or you come back into the game and say, well, the, the fifth question I can't answer because I didn't understand any, any help making hand off. Or you have an exit criteria. Like typing in agent, you know, yeah, like okay. uh, to escalate to an agent immediately. So now let's start a co-browse <coughs> session, for example. And there you see even this 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 multi-cloud approach. So you see this is not a Cisco solution I'm using now. That's also something what uh, where we do have a lot of uh, positive uh, um, uh, feedbacks on. So this this one, for example, we can use the Surfly platform in order to start. Uh, a cobra session. So I'm sending out as an agent, as you can see, a link back to the customer, so the customer on the phone can click on the link. And now you see both are seeing the same. Both are seeing the same website. Both can. So I'm at the moment the agent is the leader, so I can switch the role between so that either the agent or the customer leads. So we can browse through me as a me as an, uh, a customer because I'm on the phone, right? I can say here, this this I like, for example. So these things you can you can use as well. And um, besides that, there's also the possibility that you can that you can also share a document. So if I share a document. Which one? This one? So it's a PDF file. And now we are sitting here on the PDF. And within the PDF, I can now start. I can't see it better. Yeah, I can now start typing in here my, my first name, last name, information. And, and the same thing you can see on. Uh, uh, on both sides. So it's a little bit hard to read, right? So what I'm entering in here, first name, last name, this stuff is also then transferred into my mobile, for example. Yeah? So the question is, do you really make a PDF working on a mobile? This is a uh, little bit fancy. Yeah. yeah, last but not least, uh, join a video chat. Let's try this one. So we can now, uh, I haven't tested that with the WebEx Bot Connect. Let's see if it works. So we can also say, um, please make a video. So on the mobile, I do the same. Access to my camera, Hit the join button.
And there you see now, you can have the same as when well working in a, in a video call, if you want, so between both parties. Good. So let's close this down. Any questions to here? Yeah, first, it's, so it's basically an inbound contact center. There are no functionality for, for outbound calls. There is. So you okay. can set up campaigns. Yeah. And then, then these are running in the preview mode from dialer perspective. Okay. And I always need a PSTN line, or is there also a possibility to connect via WebRTC? Or it's pure PSTN. Okay. You so always the agent to... always needs to have a telephone or yeah. a telephone line. Okay. Yeah. Or a soft but line. Or a soft is... line. Any soft line. Yeah, but yeah. access to PSTN. Yeah, yeah you yeah. need something. Yeah. yeah. So we're working on WebRTC yeah. at yeah. the moment. It would be a fine feature. It's one, yeah, yeah. It's, we're fighting for getting it. Yeah. The agent is in uh, charge for uh, audio calls. But uh, what about if the agent is just running on chat and email, then they don't know. Of course. Yes, then. Okay, yeah. interesting. Done. Was there a second question? Or? Uh, I mean, I was wondering, from an operations perspective, how do you balance or how do you prioritize those channels? I mean, obviously, you would probably always keep the calls on first priority. And then, but mm -hmm. this, I think it's also a question how you organize your teams and how you organize your agents. Yeah, exactly. But do you? Do you really? I mean, a live chat is most as critical as like like a voice call. So if I'm on the website now and I ask him for chat, and I think we all did the same experience in our private life, when we go to a website, oh, there's a chat button. Click. You enter something. Nothing happens. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bad experience, right? So, so don't don't make the mistake to underestimate the digital part. So live chat is, has the same priority like a voice call. Yeah, the, I, I guess the question is on productivity, because of course it takes longer to type than to talk. So mm -hmm. if you look at handling times, then the call is more efficient than the right. chat. That's why, you, that, that's why you set up the system that you give, for example, four uh, in parallel chats to one agent. You can determine how many, let's say four. So it's, it's very handy to use four. Yeah? So that means you're working as an agent on four different chat sessions at the same time. And the fifth one, and for the fifth one, you are blocked because then you're full. You, you, you don't... You don't let more than, 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 than four through, or one voice call. But would you technically, though, if you have four parallel chats open, would you still be able to receive a call at the no, same time? No, when you have four, then you're full. When you have, when you have um, uh, less than this limit, you can get a voice call. That's configurable. It depends on how the profile has just been set up. It's based, based on experience, how, how skilled the agents are how much uh, uh, prioritization you put into fulfilling the requests from the digital channels and so on. It really depends on how each and every connect center operator is running it. Uh, all the right. so, so they'll have like three chats open and a voice call. For a, yeah. For instance, yeah. voice call. Yeah. And one email, for example. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and so who, my agent. who has worked with this? Who has some experience to share from, from real life? Nobody. Mm -hmm. In a way, life, uh, no company is setting up uh, such a uh, complete uh, set of this email chat and voice to the same time. Makes no sense, really. Right, no sense. right, because I think in some cases, I mean, we're even struggling to balance emails and calls. And mm -hmm. we have people, fo agents focus on one channel right. only mm -hmm. because right. that hybrid model in the end is less efficient and yeah. more. I mean, right. just it, it depends how big the organization mm -hmm. is. So if you have the organization is, you know, it, it's big enough, well then most of the customer what they're going to do is they say, okay, you log in from two to four to, right. to do email, or exactly. you have a separate department doing email. Mm -hmm. But again, you, you still have the, then you have the challenge in the back end. It's not a challenge to be honest, because anyway, you track that most likely, maybe through your CRM, because CRM is a leading system. So if somebody, uh, then if you get a call in related to that chat or mm, related nice to the email, you do need to make sure that in best way you can. You see it on the customer history as well, right. but it's most likely it's, it's more it's better if you show <laughs> that up. If you mm -hmm. in the back end you integrate that into into your single CRM if you, if you have a CRM like whatever Salesforce SAP mm -hmm. or whatever, then it's it's more handy. But we can do that stuff as well related mm -hmm. to the contact. So if you see hey that guy sent an email right now. Just make sure that the guy, one guy doesn't try the whole organization crazy. So, right. Because the point is, you send a, you send a chat, yeah, 
I got that problem. Why? Yeah. Next month, send the same email. I still have the same problem. And then you make a phone call. Right. Then you most likely have three agents occupied with the same uh, yeah. case. So, same. Yeah. so you need to choose. <laughs> Again, it's like, and I, I, uh, I agree that if you get, if you have very small organizations, then sometimes it makes sense because you can split them off by like, mm -hmm. doing two days just email. Mm -hmm. And if you get bigger, you, sometimes you say. No, this guy's, I don't like to have you on phone call. You're much yeah, better right. at answering <laughs> asynchronous mails. And then you have more people that most likely better on phone, and then you can split them, but you need a lot of people, agents, yeah. to, to have the separate skills. And then again, you have the next challenge, and then you have a lot of skills, and then if you have a lot of language, and then you have off-peak times, now it's getting more complicated, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Busy yeah, really. hours is probably you get stuff and you get mm -hmm. the off hours, and it's mm -hmm. not easy. It is not, we, we can solve it, but the way how we used to solve it, yeah. You can have it if you like, if you don't yeah. like it. Yeah. You can say, okay, you can make just two chats at the same time and voice call or no, and you can just do two chats. And again, it's about the skill, uh, do the <laughs> easy skill. Chat is probably um, easier to handle if you have a more complex case. The people they handling more complex right. cases, so. Oh. And just to, just to imagine you have an example running an organization with very very much of call interactions, and just a very few of them of our chat would be very nice and easy yeah. to have everything in one cockpit That's and right. enable. It. If you are driving a, a transition within your company, and let's say let's say okay, we might going to like toss and set. We have those different times of where we're working and. Agents want to work after hours, but not taking calls after hours. Maybe just doing emails and chat from when the, when the kids are on the bed, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's really easy for them. You can use the same interface. You can use the same agent as just doing a different channel. No, no, what is well, good, but now you've seen the, the voice bot stuff, whatever it is, bot, let's call it bot stuff, you know, the AI <laughs> stuff, you know. Only the, 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 the big advantage here is it makes life easier. Why it makes life easier? Because that's what uh, Ben O'Shea is saying in the morning, because uh, if, you, if you do all that bot stuff, you know, if you do all these analyzes, because there's a lot of analyzes in the background, so you, you understand more your content, you understand more your business cases, you understand more how to solve your customer request, because you get all that data. It's mm -hmm. all about analytics. But the next time, so the, the next step we have a lot of discussion with customer is about agent assist. So getting all that information and have during a voice call or a chat session an agent assist, which is the right answer. So mm -hmm. at the same time, you, you listen, you listen to what the customer, if you have a voice call in, you have the agent here, and agent assist me, if you, you listen to her, and then you get proposed solutions in the next window. Oh, the customer had an issue with that. So finally, this, and this, is, this needs to be trained as well, you know, and that, then you, get into the knowledge. The next, next topic was mentioned in the morning. There's another um, typical use case. It's an IT help desk, you know, especially in Europe. So there's a lot of customers, like I had that discussion with IKEA. You know, they said, yeah, I have to handle 19 languages. You know? And the people in the shops, you know, they usually don't speak English. But finally, if they have an, an IKEA Croatia, you know, if they have an issue, because the whole system is down, whatever, you know, they have a problem. There is a Croatian guy, maybe off-site, maybe on the main time, dialing in or chatting. They, they offer actually chatting. Yeah. And what they're doing, they chat, they do a translation in between in English, and then there's another guy who's speaking English or not. If he does speak English, Spanish, they need the English to do the translation to help the guys. And that's another advantage because they have a disadvantage. Usually they have agents, they have an average four language skills. That is not enough. Mm -hmm. It's, it fits at the main hour, the 12 o'clock, yeah, when everybody is there, but in the off-sides, yeah, the shops are open at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. I think some of them, they have open till 10 o'clock. If something happens with the system, wow. And you have a centralized uh, IT at it. And this is this translation service, so each of this is one, and translation <coughs> service, the customer they asking for. Chat is pretty easy. Now we are working on, which is pretty hard, is voice. To make it usable, this is very. This is not easy to solve. That we are right now in talks, try to solve that to make it um, usable. 
because you have two lines and if you get the translation at the same time in and you have to stop the channels and you make that more with chat is it's pretty much easy. And then you're putting on the back, you're putting five chat translations engines because well, that's one good in take probably the Google for English and DPL for Croatia or five others for, and then you have to handle that. It's quite interesting. Again, and that comes with what, what you said. You know, that helps a lot to, to be more efficient in handling all these conversations. And again, anything what you learn there, everything what you implement there, the system never forgets. It's better than training agents. <laughs> I think uh, what I see as very important yeah. in, in all the experience over the last 10, 15 years, if you're developing an omni-channel strategy, yes. it's important that you know what your customers want and how they, how they are react. So it's completely different from business to business. So in pharmaceutical, yeah. it might be a bit, uh, different huh, than in IT reseller environment. So for me personally, if I have a problem with Amazon, for instance, I would never ever call them. I would chat them because yeah. I have 10 minutes, 15 minutes time, no problem. They and you get answer. FAQs before you get FAQs. But the point if I want to order a life saving medicine, I want to get, let's say, And it, 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 we can't, the, the point is we know that the technology, we are consultant as well for sure, but we are not industry specialists. So, and that is where it comes. Yeah, because the business they know how, they know it better they know it really better and another one another one sorry that I that I because always sorry can I, oh good okay. so just proceed because when the, the, this technology get easier accessible which is great because what you heard in the morning with all these AI stuff there is a big 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 thing which is about training. So today we don't train new agents, and we can't train new AI. That is a point. So finally, you need to give the business access to do the training. Mm -hmm. Let's take the Croatian example. I, I don't speak Croatian. You know, how can I train that? Or how we don't have one guy? I think go to Bulgaria. I don't know. So the, the business at the end, all these, we need to make sure that we take care of the backend, we take care that it's easy to access, we take care of the training material to empower the business to do that in a very easy way by themselves. And then they train the system out, they, and they make it better, because that is, it's like training. You, you, you make it better, better, better all the time. It's not there at day one, but if you run that three, three months, six months, it gets better, and they take care of themselves of the quality at the end of the day. That's how it is. But it's, 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 it's very impressive. Why it's very impressive? Because at the end of the day, the power of technology gets easier accessible. The only disadvantage you have today sometimes is all these GDPR stuff. Because not everything what is accessible is probably possible. To provide the technology, I think you know, yeah. these days it's really not, let's say, a big challenge anymore. Mm -hmm. But what I see and what I saw also the last years is that within organizations, yeah, not you, but <laughs> other people, yeah, when they hear bots, yeah, they say, yeah, no problem. Build me a bot three weeks then it works. So I think there also needs to change a little bit the, the, the mindset and moving more into the reality because the bot is, if you don't train them, it's stupid. Yeah? So you have to invest a lot of effort, a lot of time with skills that cannot be provided in most of the cases from 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 us, BNS, Capgemini, whoever, it needs to be done internally. So yeah, so what, yeah, the efforts. What it be? Very simple. So I had a picture where um, a big guy handshake with a small kid. You, know, you have to lead that. The advantage here of the whole story is you train or everybody you train your agents every day, physical agents. You do that every day. You get new agents, you have to train them again. You get that you have a whole department they do the training. Just use that department to train the bots. Because you train them yeah. once and now you can scale them with an agent. You train one agent, 
and you have to trade another, then the other agent, they, they quit the company, then you have to trade the next one. This is an endless story, the robot. Just do that once. Take care, and this is a, this is a shift. People in the mindset, they have the organization, the business, they have the skill. They do that already. Now the only dif difference is use that time or a fraction of the time how you train those thousands of agents today just to train specific skilled bots for specific use cases. And this is scalable. I guess it's very much dependent on the organi organizational yeah. setup. So in an ideal world, you would have all those skills in an organization, but sometimes you don't. And then there is that delta in between, that empty space that you need to fill in order yeah. to make use of the technology and invest sensibly to turn it into something productive. And it's that exact piece in the middle that I think is what, what, we're, what we're struggling with. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're there with in other places besides, besides just uh, contact center. I mean, it's uh, where you, you're trying to explain to the country that, well, this tool is very good, only if you make it good. And it, you know, and then you'll have one country that just hates it, hate it, hate it, and they don't, they don't like it. Uh, another country that's like, it's great. And then when you go in and actually, I'm thinking of uh, an OC, OCR solution, you go in and you look at how much has been taught, how much the one country that loves it mm -hmm. has taught the system. And the one that hasn't, there, it's like blank. There's like no lines in there. And you're like, if you, if you just invest a little time. So now for, for that case, we do have a team that's spending time specifically on, the, on teaching. It's not just country specific. So that's kind of a transition period as well, where we're realizing, well, it makes enough sense to have some dedicated folks to this task because it's saving a lot of headache, but also a lot of just time mm -hmm. from the, the countries. So. But it also saves frustration on the customer side, and it's not, yeah. let's say, yeah. working as expected. Yeah, which is more important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, you know, it is not to, to pick the right use case first. Mm -hmm. Don't make it too complicated. Just think, start with the easy use case, get, get used to, because there's a whole, as you mentioned, there's a whole learning curve. It's about motivation. Maybe there's a, maybe, the point is, you have to get them on the right step. So, and, and if you get the right people and you start go the stairs up with them, stair by step, then it works. If you go from that stair to this one, yeah. most of them get, they get lost. You say, okay, yeah, it's great, you can't go there, but I don't show you the... the and it is about enablement. That is a learning process we had as well, because now it's not up, at the end, it's not up to us any longer. It's not like you have a specification and then we have an engineer and he's running through that specification. No, we have to do that together, that stuff. Which means finally we change from an execution company, based on the technology for sure, but we, we change to enabling the, 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 the customer, enabling your organization, enabling with training materials and all that stuff, your business. And enabling on a way which makes it easy, not all these crappy technology. You said well, you have to do that, that, and you do it this way, you have to go around, and that one should be even easy for them. And it needs to be fun. And the, the big the big part about that, you do it the right way, because that's new, it's new, good stuff for them. And some of them you find your champions and they really like it. And that's what I see it's all the first time if they get into the tool. Not everybody, you know, but it is as easy at the first moment, it could be really complicated at the end, you know, but it, it, the first step, it makes it, there's no threshold, not big threshold to get the business in, and it's fun for them. Anyway, sorry. Talk okay, yeah, that, maybe that's, that's pretty for the last 10 minutes, and we can discuss this further on yeah. doing, having the grill, right? <laughs> Hot topic. Hot topic. Hot topic. <laughs> yeah, right. Hot right. topic. <laughs> okay, I, I got not too much uh, left, but um, uh, the last two in interesting things. So basically, um, supervisor management. So who of you in the room does know the supervisor management consortium, Hofer and Sutter? So half of the room, right? Okay. So... Maybe this is pretty cool because what you know from uh, SMC or Supervisor Management Con uh, Console 
Um, this is what we also will provide uh, for WebEx Contact Center. So that means we have a platform, which you already know from the UCCE or PCCE, and we have integrated this one in, into the WebEx Contact Center in order to control your opening hours, in order to control um, uh, core flow switches, and so on and so on. It's currently on an MVP stage, so it's, it's not released as of now. Um, there's also some functionality is missing. For example, the reskilling is at the moment not available in the supervisor management console, but this is all something which we will implement as soon as we do, the, uh, until we have the APIs available in order to make the integration for that part. This SMC can live in multiple ways. So it can live in the Asian desktop, we'll see it in a demo in a few minutes. And then we also can see this uh, in Salesforce, for example. So that means when you have a Salesforce or a CRM-centric approach in a company, also the supervisor can work using Salesforce with possibilities of SMC on top. Um, could even look like this, so that you have here a native Salesforce integration and our so-called cockpit, so the possibility to control your contact center per service. You can plug this as well into Salesforce uh, in a very native way, like here on this uh, screenshot. So how does it work? Close my chat here from before. Wrap up. So we do have the SMC here uh, within the agent desktop. So we need to log in. And then there's something which you may already know, this is the SMC cockpit. So this is an SMC cockpit for WebEx Contact Center. So for example, we can control the opening hours in here. So we can go in here and check for the opening hours for this certain service uh, in Web for WebEx Contact Center. Uh, we can turn on and turn off an emergency routing, for example. We can turn on and turn off an overflow, for example, to a different team. We can also determine the target. So for example, if an overflow goes to an external company, you can, you can modify the number here or a mobile number in order to forward calls to external world. And last but not least, pretty cool in my eyes is we have now the possibility that we can have a TTS in here in order to create your prompts in here and let them play back to the system. So for example, if I call in here, you will hear the hello and welcome. Hello and welcome. None, thank you for calling our contact center. And so on and so on. And now if I go here and can, and can put, for example, Dear Bucher and Suta Friend, as an example, I can, um, then I, I will hear this announcement when I call back again. Or if I turn on the overflow, let's say we turn on the overflow team number two, if I do that, then the core flow is reacting on this one and is then involving, for example, a different team in this here. So if I, if I do things like this, what we do in the back end is basically from the, from the WebEx contact center, we call web services in the, in, in the core flow. And these web services are going into a shared instance of uh, supervisor management console, which is hosted in our cloud. So there you also see this approach again, that you have this multi-cloud, right? So you have WebEx Connect Center and for example, the, the SMC from, from another cloud, in this case, our cloud, if you want so. So what happens if I call in this here? Hello and welcome dear Booker and Suter friend. Let us involve the overflow team too. I will send calls to 49172808099. So normally you wouldn't build up such kind of call flow for your customers, right? But, <laughs> <laughs> but this gives you an impression of you, you, you change something here and something happens in here. That's, that's the approach to show, right? And, and for that, um, I really like this, even with this TTS thing, so that you can now customize your prompts which gives you much more flexibility. Last but not least, the administration. Have a, let's have a quick look on that one as well. 
So from the administration perspective, so there's a complete uh, new editor sitting in the back in order to, to control your contact center, your flows, your call flows. Um, this one we will see in a, in a second in the, in, in, in the demo. And this has the power to call any kind of web services. And there you see the new world, if you want so. So there's no database lookup anymore because in cloud there's no database, right? So because everything is sitting in, in individual cloud systems and you can call from one cloud another cloud via the APIs. And if I do something like that, just by example with uh, hello dear Bucher Suter friend, So, this is in the flow, here's the call is coming in, and then, not too technical, but a little bit, because we like it, uh, the possibility that we can call a web service, that's the web service, the SMC system, where we say, okay, let's, let's try to get the welcome announcement. So we call this web service, and what we get back from the web service is basically, um, an inf what we call an info text, right? So the hello and welcome, dear Buchos Uta friend. And if I take that one, which I store into a variable in the second step, I can simply say, use the, te the text to speech engine. So for example, in Google, I can even determine different languages, Denmark, US, Canada, whatever you like to have, right? So big list in here. And then you simply say, read via TTS what, what you have received in this variable. And that's what you have heard with this Hello and welcome, dear Google Suter friend. So, so, so easy is the word in order to connect two clouds together. And with that being said, I'm done with the session so far. Oh no, sorry, I forgot one thing. Just apologize. Uh, um, analytics, uh, reporting, of course. Um, so there's also a possibility that you can have your, your reports. So historical and real-time reports. And uh, all, also served out of the platform. There's also a different approach if you compare it to the UCCE world. In the UCCE world, basically what we do is we look into a database, we take certain numbers from a table, calculate a number, and display it in a tool. That's what we do with, with so-called CUIC, Cisco Unified Intelligence Center. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the tools in the, in, in the new uh, WebEx products and platforms are differently working. So we don't touch individual fields and calculate things in there. What we basically do is, you can compare this to, to Excel, uh, to a, a pivot table. I think you all have worked with a pivot table in Excel. So you have a column and uh, an X and Y, and then you can say, I want to have this number in relation to that number. You can, you can pull them into the tool and create your table out of that. And, and this gives you a much more bigger power also to deep dive into uh, individual reportings something goes wrong, your abandon rate is, 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 is rising, then you can create your own pivot table based on, on, on such an event like a uh, high abundant rate and in order to find out what's, what's going on. Um, there's also then the possibility to show everything in, in, in a dashboard. So there's a possibility that you can have uh, flows like, um, like, like the one what we, what, what we see in here. So we can see what the traffic, what comes in, what is abundant on IVR, what gets into a queue, what gets to a certain agent. So you can see the whole trip of, of, the, um, of the agents, uh, of the customer's experience. And with that being said, <laughs> with that to be precise, I'm done. Any questions so far?